walking in my shoes Try walking in my shoes You'll stumble in my footsteps Good morning <clears throat> and welcome to day number 33 I think it is Right we're off to Road Heath today a pub which someone suggested to me, and I'm sorry to that person, he said if you do go there let me know. I can't remember who you were, I'm sorry. Um, but we're stopping there tonight, it's literally only about an 8 mile walk today. Very tired, very tired indeed from yesterday's walk. Uh, the first half of it I have to walk through the streets to get to the canal, and then it's all the way up the canal to uh, the pub which we're staying at tonight, which is called the Broughton Arms, I think. Yeah, very tired. It really took it out of me yesterday. Did that, uh, did that 19 mile walk. My brain ain't working at all. I still haven't woken up properly. Anyway, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Let's do this. I just can't seem to wake up today. Just went to the co-op, drew all my money out of the bank, went inside and tried to pay by card, and it got declined. How embarrassing! I was supposed to be paying in cash. Just can't wake up. It's one of them days where you just don't know what you're doing. Just like a zombie. So this is one of them annoying things as a walker. I've come from there, I wanted to get to here. But to get to here, you have to go down there, cross there and walk back up here because they put these bloody fences up. Whoops, I swore then, sorry. It's so annoying. Just extra, you know, and that's not a one-off. That happens a lot of times in one day. I've just checked out my routes for today and realised I've got like four and a half, five miles of road before I get onto the canal. So I'll only have like three, hour, three miles of canal at the end of the day and that's it. All the rest is road. And the reason for that is... Why beep? It's not big, it's not hard, it's not clever, is it? Um, put me off my stride now. The reason for that is there's a tunnel on the canal where you can't walk on the canal. It's like a mile and a half long. It's supposed to be haunted apparently. Um, so I've got to bypass that and join the canal further north, which means a long walk on the roads, which I don't want to be doing really. A lovely little walk now. It's like a footpath stroke cycle route, I think. And it leads pretty much all the way to the canal. Still a few miles to go, but yeah, it's nice, peaceful, relaxing, nobody around. Can do this all day long. Well, not all day, you know, I'll get tired after a bit, but I'm enjoying it so far. What a lovely building this is. Victoria Hall. I'm not sure what it is, I'll be honest. Part church, part... Oh, it's a town hall. Why are town halls always the best? The best in the towns. Lovely. So we're back on the canal. Loads of motorhomes up there. I don't know what that place is. Whether it's a caravan site or what, I don't know. Shiraz, a boat called Shiraz, as in the wine. Horrible stuff. Gives me a bad headache, red wine. Just passing some locks here. Very nice bridge over there. I don't know if that's a railway line or something goes over the top. That, that bit just seems a bit odd. It's called Pool Lock Aqueduct. So I'm guessing it is a was a, tr a train line at one point. I'm nearly there. <laughs> Two and a half miles to go. Hardly any video for you today. I knew it was going to be like this today. I was just too tired. So, so tired. And it wasn't a long walk, eight miles. You know, that's nothing for me now. But uh, it's, a, it's just such a beautiful day. Where we're staying, mazzy has got there. Apparently it's absolutely beautiful. Um, right next to the canal. And it's gonna be a, a sunny day in double temperatures, about 10, 11 degrees Celsius today. So gonna have a good afternoon in the beer garden, I think. Editing videos whilst sat next to the canal, having a drink. Sounds good to me. This is actually a really nice stretch, but I think a lot of the reason being, this is one of the offices of the Canal and River Trust. So they're looking after it. There's actually one of them down there, 
with a bin liner picking up rubbish as we speak. But look at that house there. Well, it's not a house, it's like a, a summer house outside a, another lovely house. Beautiful. So today is the day after Valentine's Day, so you'll have seen the Valentine's Day video we did the other day. What a present from Mazzy, honestly, I could have cried. When I saw that wooden box with the hearts in, and every heart saying one thing she loves about me, and there were about 50 hearts in there, I, I nearly teared up a little bit. That's, I've, no one's ever done anything like that for me before, that's the best present I've ever had in my life, it really is. The most thoughtful present I've ever had in my life, I just adored it. I'm hoping we can get it up on the wall somewhere in the motorhome. We'll have to wait and see. She's just messaged me again, I can hear my other phone. It just went blah, blah, blah. And that's a sign that it's Mazzy, because only Mazzy messages me on WhatsApp. Um, yeah, and we're off to Reykjavik. Reykjavik in uh, Iceland. Absolutely buzzing. Because me and, me and Mazzy, we've sat down in the past saying, where, where would we like to go for a dream holiday? And I'm more of a warm person, I'll be honest. I like the thought of a tropical beach, something like that. But Maz's idea of the perfect holiday is something like uh, the North Pole, you know? But we both really want to see the Northern Lights. So this is just something we've both always wanted to do, and we're finally going to be able to do it. Now, I were doing a lot of research on Iceland last night. Some amazing things to see. We're going to be, uh, obviously, look for the Northern Lights. Fingers crossed we'll see them. Um, what else is there? There's like hot springs, you know, where the water shoots up from hundreds of metres and it just looks amazing, like volcanic. I think there's about 200 active volcanoes there. And then you've got, I can't remember what it's called, something pool, which again, it's like water, which is 38 degrees. And you just sit in it, yeah, it's zero. Uh, in the air, so that's going to be amazing. A few cool museums, there's just so much to do. Beaches, there's one called Diamond Beach, which has like crystallized ice, massive chunks of ice all over it, which have come off the glaziers. Struggling with the light today, so yeah, so much to see. But, and there is a but, it is so expensive. Looking at the prices last night, a beer can be anything up to like 10 pounds one guy said a loaf of bread was 15 pounds but then somewhere else it said five pounds but even so five pound for a loaf of bread the prices are astronomical five pound for a, a bottle of water <laughs> so how we're going to afford that i've no idea i, I don't know if mazzy has got all this uh, realized all this before but i've certainly realized it's going to cost a fortune over there so I was looking at cheap places to eat, you know. Um, I found a hot dog stand, meant to be really good, world famous. Bill Clinton's had a hot dog from there. Uh, fish and chips, you can get them, they won't be too dear, maybe 20 quid each. Um, tacos, you can get them. So there is going to be places where we can get cheapish food. But Mazzy wants to eat out every night, so I don't know, we'll play it by ear. But I'm, I'm going to really, well, we're not going to play it by ear, I'm going to really plan this trip properly um, yeah cause I, I just want this to be the best time ever and I'm already doing my research so I'm looking for the cheapest pub in Reykjavik if anyone knows where it is please let me know I've already found the cheapest supermarket it's called Bonus I'm not tight I'm just careful, you know, I'm just worried that we're not going to be able to afford it once we're there. And I want it to be special. Um, anyway, I'm blabbering on, blabbering on. Let's get to Mazzy. About two miles and I'm there. Come on then. Hello, come on. Come here. Come on then. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come here. Come on. Come on. You ignorant git. I don't know how well you can see this. But this dude here in this jet, I don't know if it's going to be blurry, he set off, he went that way, and then he must have fallen asleep, went over there, and then he realised he'd fallen asleep and woke up and got back on track. Wake up. 
I suppose if you are going to fall asleep on any mode of transport, an aeroplane's the best place to do it, isn't it? You know, not like a passenger one. It's not a passenger one, it's like a jet. It's, you know, you could fall asleep for 20 minutes and probably not hit another plane. You'd probably get away with it for a few hours, really. In fact, it might be a good place to go for a kip. You know, if you're struggling to sleep at home, get in your plane, get up in the air, just have a kip, and you'll be all right. You won't hit anything, as long as you're not facing down. Just to update you on uh, the donations, we received just one donation yesterday of £10 from Mr or Miss or Ms or Mrs Anonymous, Anonymous. so uh, thank you very much Ms, Mr, Mrs, Miss Anonymous, uh, very much appreciated. Yeah, that was for £10, I, I don't know the total, sorry I didn't even look this morning. But if you'd like to consider donating, there's a link in the description, the Just Giving link. It's to help raise money for Maz's dad, Tom. Thank you very much. So it's just another lock. I pass these every mile or so. Just another lock, but what I really like about this lock, normally they have really fancy names and a bit posh. This one's just straightforward, it just tells you, lock. I'm a lock, that's all you need to know, I'm a lock. I don't need a fancy name. Here's my lock, here's my sign, lock. Get through it and get to the other side. Yeah, I'm, I like that a lot. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a lock. I've got one job and that's to open and close. That's all I've got to do. I don't need to call myself Broughton Lock. Here's, a, here's my history, I was opened in 1863 and I've done this and I've done that. You're just a lock, mate. It's, it's just like pieces of wood which open and close. That's it. That, I, I, I've got a lot of respect for that lock. Gone right up in my estimation. I thought all locks were a bit sissy-ish. But that's changed my mind. That's a proper man's lock, is that. Slight little problem. Um, shin splints. I'm surprised I've not had them yet. And I'm, I've just felt a tingle for the first time. Luckily, I've only got half a mile to go today, so this is the best time it could have come. But it can be a massive problem. I had it, I think, when I went coast to coast. Oh, it's a painful feeling. I'm sure most of you have had that in your life. Shin splints. Um, but if you get that and you've still got 10 miles to go, 15 miles to go, you're in trouble. But there's another guy who did this, Land's End to John O'Groats, who's got a few videos out. And I think he got... He had one day or two days of having it really severe and I think he was about 100 miles ahead of where I am now. So I, I'm still expecting it. I thought it would be something you'd get in the first few days but he got it, you know, halfway through. So I'm still expecting to go through that which is not a pleasant feeling. I don't think there's much you can do about it. And I'm not even sure what it is. I think it's something to do with your muscle pulling away from the bone or something like that. I can't remember. It's nothing to worry about, but it can be painful. See where the swan's going. To Mazzy. <laughs> that's Mazzy there. That's his home. And that's the end of today. So thanks for watching, guys. A shorter video for you today. On this beautiful day. I can relax now. I'm really looking forward to this. After the long day yesterday. Um, thanks for watching. See you all tomorrow. Take care and have a good day. Stumble in my footsteps